The year is 2057 and the sun is dimming causing freezing temperatures on the Earth seven years prior to this a mission named Icarus was sent to restart the sun but the ship mysteriously went missing now the equal assignment is being attempted by means of the crew of Icarus 2. They are wearing a stellar bomb the size of Manhattan with the intention to detonate it on the floor of the sun in order to restart the dying big name the entire deliver of Icarus 2 is constructed behind a ginormous shield that protects it from the sun's heat and light on board the Icarus 2 or 8 astronauts Kappa who designed and operates the Stellar Bomb Canada the Captain Cyril the psychologist Mace Corazon Cassie Trey and Harvey Cyril is sitting inside the remark room of the ship searching on the solar through a window that filters out the solar's light he asks the delivers AI named Icarus to reduce the clear out so he can look at more daylight Icarus suggests him simply 3.1 percentage of the sun's full may and its miles already greater than he can bear he is inquisitive about it subsequent the complete crew is having dinner collectively while Canada famous that someday in the subsequent 24 hours they will attain the lifeless zone this means that that they will lose all communications with earth they were not anticipating this till subsequent week Canada says that if everybody wants to send out very last messages back to earth they need to do it now Kappa goes in first and data a message for his own family in which he mentions that by the time they get this message he will be near the solar in the Meantime Corazon seems after the delivers greenhouse and reports to Canada that they're producing excess oxygen which manner they'll have enough for the return journey Corazon can inform that Canada is thinking about Icarus 1 and she says they have no concept what precipitated that undertaking's failure but it really wasn't a loss of oxygen a combat breaks out between Kappa and Mace due to the fact Kappa took too lengthy to send his message and the sun wind is now picked up in order that they cannot send out any extra messages due to his outburst mace has to take a session with Cyril and Cyril prescribes him with hours within the earth room which is a room that creates earthly environments for the astronauts afterward mace gives a poorly performed apology to Kappa Cassie broadcasts to the rest of the crew that they are going to see Mercury passing in front of the sun and every body excitedly gathers inside the commentary room to watch in a while Harvey hears a unusual sign and gathers everybody he well known shows that it is the distressed signal of Icarus one that's achieving them now because the iron content of mercury is appearing like an antenna they check the place of the signal and realize that the deliver is close to the sun and just a few thousand miles out from their personal trajectory they all debate whether the group of the deliver should nevertheless be alive but mace says this is a ludicrous debate due to the fact their venture is a ways too important to desert simply to assist a team which could or may additionally not be alive all people has the same opinion however cyril factors out that their undertaking is incredibly sensitive and has only been examined in principle they haven't any idea if it is simply going to work but going to the Icarus one will give them a second stellar bomb which means they'll have tries at the task which could be worth the detour. Mace says they need to vote on it however Canada says the selection have to come from the most knowledgeable man or woman on the problem which is Kappa Kappa admits to Canada that whether or not the bomb will absolutely attain the surface of the solar is everybody's guess because there are too many variables to don't forget but he admits that there's no fabric left again on earth for some other project and they may be humanity's closing desire so it would be better if they had two photographs at this they comply with cross after Icarus 1 next an alarm is heard throughout the ship the crew gathers to peer what is wrong and Trey well known shows that he messed up he made all the calculations for the brand new trajectory and grew to become the ship however forgot to adjust the perspective of their protect to the new function of the solar relative to them he is thrashing himself up over it however Canada says that they may be no longer all burning from the sun right now which means the harm is not that awful mace famous that four sectors of the protector are offline but they cannot be reset from the inside due to the fact their laptop components are burned they need to exit and manually reset them Canada says he'll go and change volunteers to go with him Canada tells Trey to stay and mace shows Kappa should pass Kappa and Canada put on particularly thick metallic gold spacesuits and undertaking out to manually check the defend meanwhile Cassie rotates the protect so that the areas that they're going to 
to check are far away from the solar and within the shadow because the protect rotates first rate noises are heard and Mace says it's simply elements of the shield cooling down and as a end result expanding and contracting in the meantime Trey remains beating himself up over his mistake distinctly sweaty and stressed in their spacesuits Kappa and Canada arrive at the guard and manipulate to reset the first broken sector the crew is worked up at this win however just then one of the ship's rotating towers comes in contact with the sun rays and displays the mild immediately onto the deliver's greenhouse burning it up sensing a chance to the project Icarus takes control of the deliver and starts rotating the guard lower back to its authentic position to prevent the complete ship from burning up Cassie overrides Icarus because if the guard rotates Kappa and Canada might be uncovered to the sun mace items and says in the event that they don't rotate the guard there whole project will fail that is more crucial than the lives of Kappa and Canada Cassie is outraged however Canada helps Mace on this and says not anything is more vital than the mission in the meantime Corazon is distraught over the loss of the greenhouse there is handiest one area of the shield left to reset and Canada tells Kappa to head again within the deliver as he works on it himself he manages to shut it in time after which all and sundry watches on as Canada receives engulfed within the full pressure of the sun tray is now sedated inside the scientific bay as Searle has declared him a suicide hazard Harvey the brand new captain informs the crew that with the greenhouse destroyed they no longer have sufficient oxygen to reach the sun and going to the Icarus one is their best desire Corazon Cassie and Mace discuss that there isn't always enough oxygen for all seven individuals however if there had been only four humans the oxygen would be enough to entire the assignment this means three of them might have to die for the task to prevail Cassie talks to Kappa and says she is certain they're all going to die she admits that she is scared and asks Kappa if he is scared too Kappa talks passionately about the stellar bomb and says they will essentially be growing a star inside a celebrity he says it will be lovely and therefore he is not scared they arrive at Icarus 1 detached from their guard and dock with Icarus 1 mace Harvey Kappa and Searle enter the ship and begin looking through it Kappa unearths that the stellar bomb is nevertheless practical Harvey finds the greenhouse has been growing this complete time and Searle unearths there may be food and jogging water on the ship however Mace finds that for some reason the ship's flight systems had been disabled he unearths a video message within the ship's files it is from the delivers Captain Pinbacker who speaks like a non-secular maniac approximately how it's miles humanity's time to die as determined by way of God and their science and hopes are foolish he says the Icarus one air leaving behind their challenge Mace discovers that the ship's mainframe has a coolant failure which means that the ship can by no means fly again their trip became a waste Cyril reveals the hour bodies of the Icarus 1 team in the observation room he assumes they had been burned because the filter out allowed all of the sunlight interior however he doesn't realize why or how he says the clear out is likely absolutely open and the best purpose there isn't always daylight within the room is due to the fact they're in the back of the shield of Icarus 2 just then there is an unknown twist of fate and Icarus 2 begins floating away away from Icarus 1 mace and the group rushed lower back to the airlock but Cassie exhibits that come what may the airlock has been destroyed and they cannot dock once more mace finds a spacesuit inside Icarus 1 and says Kappa is going to wear it and move lower back to Icarus 2 Harvey objects and asks why best Kappa gets to live and can says it is due to the fact Kappa is the handiest person who knows how to perform the bomb Harvey gets selfish and says he is the captain so he need to get to stay mace comes up with a plan and he says they will line up the two ships so when they open the door the vacuum sucks all of them at complete velocity into Icarus 2. Corazon warns him that the temperature in area is freezing and even a quick journey without suits will nearly kill them however Mace says it's the nice plan they have Cyril reveals that because there is no PC at the Icarus 1 someone has to live behind and manually open the door Harvey is worried they all want him to live however Cyril volunteers for the process Harvey Kappa and Mace line up on the door and Searle opens the hatch Harvey hits the door on the way out and his trajectory receives. Tousled he flies out into space freezes and dies in the meantime Mace and Kappa make it to the ship Mace has cold burns on several elements of his body however he lives Cyril enters the remark room of Icarus 1 in which the full force of sunlight enters after the Icarus 2 actions he receives engulfed in it and dies back in Icarus 2 Mace Cassie Kappa and Corazon discussed that the airlock did not get destroyed on accident someone broke it and they all suspect Trey when you consider that Trey is a risk and his 
death might also unfastened up oxygen for them to finish the venture all of them vote on killing him Kappa Corazon and Mace vote in desire while Cassie votes against it she is horrified as Mace prepares to kill Trey Mace grabs a knife and arrives to kill Trey but finds that he has already dedicated suicide Mace blames Kappa for the entirety that has took place as it turned into Kappa's choice to detour to Icarus 1 Kappa is outraged and the two fight however they cannot combat for long due to the fact there is not plenty oxygen at the deliver and that they run out of breath later Kappa is working while Icarus informs him that there are five human beings at the ship and one is unknown Icarus says the unknown person is in the observation room Kappa arrives there to find a burnt up pinbacker who is by some means still alive he another time talks about judgment day like a spiritual lunatic and says that he goes to be the final person alive to speak to God while judgment day comes he assaults Kappa with a knife inside the chest Kappa runs and pinbacker follows him at some stage in the deliver Kappa unearths a compartment and seals himself in however pinbacker locks him from the outside trapping him in the compartment Kappa realizes that it became pinbacker that destroyed the airlock pinbacker is going to the main frame of the deliver and removes it from the coolant similar to he probably did with Icarus when the ship starts to power down as a result Corazon unearths a baby plant still alive inside the greenhouse and tries to name Mace to provide him the good news however Pinbacker arrives and stabs her inside the back Mace arrives at the main PC which he powers up with a portable battery he reaches out to Kappa through a fit in his compartment Kappa tells Mace approximately Pinbacker and Mace realizes the mainframe is out of the coolant seeing that there is no strength Mace has to manually enter the coolant which is freezing to decrease the mainframe meanwhile Cassie wakes up in her room and realizes that there's someone close by she sneaks away however pinbacker spots her and a chase ensues cassie runs into the bomb chamber mace who's freezing at this point tells kappa that the computer might not come lower back online in time so he has to manually steer the bomb into the sun looking to lower the ultimate mainframe into the coolant mace's leg gets caught and he freezes to dying kappa wears the suit in his compartment and uses the heating tool in it to interrupt unfastened he arrives inside the control room and manually detaches the protect and the bomb from the rest of the deliver and then rushes to get on it before it gets too far away he makes an epic jump from the ship to the bomb and manages to make it in time earlier than the boosters at the bomb turn on he enters the bomb chamber and reveals Cassie there unfortunately pinbacker is there too after a quick fight with him Kappa and Cassie manage to get away and Kappa reaches the manipulate panel of the bomb he units the bomb off the spectacle is simply as stunning as he imagined it might be bad Back in the world Kappa's circle of relatives gets his remaining message in which he is telling them to just look out for whilst the solar shines a little brighter because when that happens they'll recognize that Kappa has succeeded just then they look up and the daylight will increase thanks for watching make sure to love our channel and subscribe in case you enjoy content like this.